Hello everyone, it is Caitlin, and today we are going back through the closet of costume to pick out an 1850s dress that sort of needed some tweaking. Okay y'all, so before we get started on actually making the dress, I did want to say a big thank you because we have hit over 50 subscribers, and which is awesome because I've only started this channel in March and I wasn't really wasn't expecting it to go anywhere. I just kind of wanted to put things out there and hopefully somebody would find them useful. Apparently as of right now as of filming this, 54 of you have found this channel to be useful in some way, which is wonderful. So um, yeah. Thank you, and we shall get back to the sewing. Alright, so welcome back to another fixing of the dresses that are already in the closet. Um, we've been working off the other side lately, and um, I don't think I mentioned it before, but my dresses are put in chronologically. So, like, these are all my 1850s dresses, and I have my early 1860s dresses, and it kind of goes from, like, 1861 to 1862 to 1863, all the way up to my 1870s dress. Um, and eventually when I have like 1830s dresses, they'll probably go in here as well. My 1840s dresses and all my other cotton stuff are um, stored, packed away. These are usually just my nicer dresses, the ones I wear more more, more often. Um, but yeah, these are all in order. So we're going to work from the 1850s side today. I think we're going to work on this gown. Alright, so here it is. Um, I've been kind of calling this one the cotton candy dress because it's a jacquard taffeta that is in, um, that's a shot weave. So like one side is blue and black stripes and the other side is just shot with pink. And so it kind of gives off this purpley vibe. I don't know if it's getting on the camera, but um, it has the pink and the blue in it, so I kind of called it the cotton candy dress. So this is basically, so you get kind of what the fabric looks like. It's really pretty. I wore it with a, I think, I think I wore it once with a black wool basque. Um, for the 1850s, and so I think we're ready to go ahead and work on it some more. Um, it should be pretty good as far as what needs to be done with it. It does. We're good. And it has a watch pocket, and it has a waistband, and it has a facing, and it has skirt lifters. Look at that. Okay. So the skirt is done perfectly. We won't need to do anything with a skirt today, which is awesome. So I think what we're going to do today is to make the top for this dress. Okay, so we're gonna use all kinds of craziness to cut out this mask. So I have here my normal bodice pattern with my three-piece back. And then I have a Simplicity 3727, which I'm gonna use for the basque part. I pulled all my pattern pieces out and I realized that um, I wasn't sure if I wanted this bodice closed at the back or closed at the front. Um, normally for evening gowns, they close up the back. Um, and even when they had a pelerine for day wear, they were still close to the back, and the pelerine had buttons on the front, um, so it made it look like it was a front cl closing bodice, even though it really wasn't. But I wasn't sure how that was going to work with the basque, so I went back to originals, which is always a great idea, and um, found out that yes, that is typical, typical to have a back closing bodice, even with a pelerine, except when the bodice is basked. When there's a basque on the bodice, I saw a prevalence of um, front closing bodices. So that's what we're going to do. There's all my bodice pieces done and the coloring pieces done. Um, we're going to sew these together and then we'll work on the bretelles later.
I got this to a point where I'm just going to go do some handwork. So I have the lower sleeves and I just um, down the edges, um, the top edges, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, stitch that down for the, up, for the lower sleeves. Bodice, um, of course put darts in. I went ahead and put boning in the darts and um, bound the hem edge, put piping on the neckline where I need to base that in, and then um, boning or and then piping in the arm size as well. So I have a whole bunch of handwork ahead of me. I'm going to go ahead and do all that. And then, oh yeah, and I also need to um, put in hooks and eyes. I'm going to do that too. So I'm going to do all the handwork and then we'll come back and probably start working on the pelerine. So I think it's time to start working on the pelerine, the bretelles, and that sort of thing. So I did have to do quite a bit of piecing on the pelerine and also the bretelles actually. Um, but I think it'll be okay and won't be terribly noticeable once it's all completed. So I had the bretelles that are going to go across my shoulders and then also the ones that are going to be hanging down. Those are going to be them. So I think I might go ahead and stitch them together or at least pin them. Stitch them together and then we can decide how exactly how we're going to do trimming and that sort of thing. Okay so I'm over here trying to get these bretelles to work and I think I finally figured it out. So I started with um, these the pattern piece I started with is from Truly Victorian's uh, 1845 dress, since she has, um, and that dress has something similar to what I was wanting, and so I went ahead and put those on, um, made sure to modify it, because they're super long, um, I don't know, the waist goes halfway to my knee on that, and I get the 1840s waist are long, but they're not that long, so yeah, took a little bit off there. But I think, because we're going to have the other pieces coming off here and here, so they get crossed over. And we're going to put like a rosette or something there. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish trimming off the back parts and then the linings. And then we can go ahead and sew all this together. Alright, so here's the pelerine. All I did was sew it together at the shoulders. And I managed to scrounge up enough bias to put it along the edge. I'm just going to whip that along like you would normally do for um, binding. And then, pelerines are really easy. I really like pelerines, because there's no darts. There's very little piping, just like right here. And then hooks and eyes, basically. Um, and then we're going to put fringe all along the edge. I haven't decided if I want to do one row of fringe or two rows of fringe, because I'm seeing an original with two rows of fringe, and I like it. But the original that we're kind of going after only has one layer of fringe. So I have this black velvet ribbon. I think we're going to put it along this side. and this side up even up all the way on this side but then we're going to put fringe here and fringe here so and that's going to save on some fringe i'm going to go ahead and i just i was going to do just the fringe and no trim but i kind of wanted a way for the bretelles to stick out on the dress since they're from the same fabric the black silk original that we copied a couple weeks ago um, had flat applied velvet trim, so I know this is the correct application. And then we're going to attach fringe here. So we're going to do the other side. And I'm not bothering to turn these ends under because it's going to be covered by the fringe. So it's difficult to tell in the video, but this is, I pieced this one several times. So this one's pieced here, and here, and here, and here. I did try to match the colors the best I could, but you can kind of still see it when you know what you're looking for. But they're not particularly noticeable, especially from, you know, the distance of a couple of feet, which, in theory, no one should be closer to me than that anyway. I was up until, like, midnight last night looking at Bertels and paintings and fashion plates of Bertels and original Bertels <laughs> to try to decide how I wanted to trim this, because originally I thought fringe all the way around, but I just felt like that was just too much, although you do see that in originals. Um, I just felt it was too much, so I decided to go with something just a little bit different in, um, on part of it, but then still use the fringe. And as always, if you're ever interested in, like, the research portion and, like, all these fashion plates and originals that I'm mentioning that I don't show in the video, I do post them on the blog, and there's always a link below where you can kind of see 
the research portion and the gathering of original images. I think that'll, because the fringe is heavier than the silk, so I think that'll help weigh it down a little bit as well um, to make sure they're not flying up and getting in my way. I haven't decided if I want to go ahead and do the coloring first or or trim, finish the bretelles. So I won't be able to finish both of them until I get the rest of the fringe in. I'm thinking go ahead and finish the bretelles since we already have them out. Alright, bretelle number one is how it's going to be. And there will be rosettes on this front to kind of hide that uh, join there. But I think that looks pretty good. You can go ahead and get that stitched up as soon as we get the other one pinned on. Well, it took a while, but um, so, but uh, all the trim is put on now. So, lots of pretty trim on the bodice and the sleeves and on the under sleeves and all the bretelles. This is what really took the longest. It's really sewing in this part. But the bretelles are completely done now, so we can put these to the side. And I think what we shall do now is to kind of baste the under, the lower sleeves into the bodice. And we don't have to do this really well because these are supposed to be removable sleeves. We also are going to have to make under sleeves for um, when I wear this as an evening gown because, yeah, that's a pretty open space in there. But we'll put in these sleeves because most likely I'll wear this more often as a day dress than I shall an evening dress gown. So I have these under sleeves that kind of have this lovely little edging on it. Um, it is vintage or antique, I'm not quite sure what it is, but it came in a giant roll and I don't remember where I got it. Uh, but it is machine done, and but it's fairly decent quality. It's light and see-through, and we're going to use this. There's no shape to this whatsoever, so it doesn't really matter how it gets put in. Suppose I could have done it at the same time, like put in this and the lower sleeve, and that probably would have saved me some time. You know, when I pulled them apart, they would just come off at the same time, which might actually work well in the future. And basting your under sleeves in is, in my opinion, so much better than elastic just because it, they don't fall down your arm. Like, if you have the elastic tight enough to where it will actually stay in one place, then your, like, circulation is cut off, which isn't a good thing. Um, so basting, it only takes about a minute or two to do each sleeve, like, no more than five minutes for the whole thing. But for some reason, people have such an aversion to it, and I don't understand that. But honestly, even with undersleeves, if you just tack it like with three or four stitches at the bottom at the top, that holds them in really well too, and it takes like maybe 15 seconds per sleeve. So there's our sleeve. We have upper sleeve, lower sleeve, undersleeve. So there are three sleeves in this lovely ensemble, which is a bit excessive, I suppose, but ah. And now that I have the sleeves and undersleeves all put in, I think we shall go ahead and work on this pelerine to get it complete because really the pelerine is the last thing to work on and this project will be done. Um, I don't know how long this video will be, but it's been <laughs> several months in the making for me um, of this gown because I'm waiting on the stupid fringe to get for France twice over because I didn't buy them the first time. So. What was supposed to be a simple, hey, let's make a bodice for the skirt that I have, ended up being quite an ordeal, and it's been in my sewing room for quite some time. So I am eager to get it out and to start on a new project, <laughs> because it's been sitting here taunting me for like four months now. So on some hook and, hooks and eyes, just right down here, I was going to do buttons, but I don't think I'm going to do that, and the original that I'm viewing does not have buttons on the pelerine or the bodice. So it'll look fine, and it's correct, but I think go ahead and put hooks and eyes on, and it's a pelerine, it doesn't have to fit terribly well, so I may just space them out a little bit more and not have to do as many, which is less work, which means, which equals less time to deal with it. And then put on a collar, 
um, and make a handkerchief. I don't know if we have a handkerchief in the skirt or not. It's been too long. Um, I shall go look, and then, but other than that, we shall be pretty much done, and we can put this on and never have to deal with it again, which is a wonderful thing. Oh, I do suppose I have to make the tucker and the undersleeves for the evening gown, but that shouldn't take too long. We are ready to put on the trim, and we also have a guest here who just wants attention, and she saw me put stuff over here and decided to come say hi. Alright, let's see how long she'll stay away. I kind of started pinning it, but I figured we can go ahead and finish it. Put the hooks and eyes a little over an inch apart, center to center, probably like an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. I didn't actually measure. So I figured while we're already here, we might as well sew on the collar, which is here. I just took the um, edging we saw earlier and put little tucks in it. Um, I'm going to put on a little piece of bias. So it's quite a wide collar, which were the fashion in the 1850s. So we're good. I think that looks really good against the dark silk. I really like that. So I shall go stitch this on, and then the coloring will be done. Let's work on the tucker. So I have here some cotton netting, and I think I'm gonna cut mine three inches because we're gonna fold it over. So I think one and a half inches is gonna be a good working length. And I measure the neckline of the gown. I need 43 inches. Have our little tucker here. I'm going to fold this in half um, and iron it. And the lace I have today is, I need to iron this as well but I have this beading. Yeah, I like that. I think we'll use that. So let me iron all these pieces because this definitely needs to be ironed. This needs to be ironed and this needs to be ironed. And then seriously, it's just, I think we've made tuckers on this channel before. So I'm going to do a very small running stitch on this side to attach this. And then I shall put this on top and stitch through all the layers just once to attach it. And then for ribbons, I'm thinking black. I have gray. I know I have a lot of black, so might as well use some of it up. Yeah, I think that would work. Oh, and I did also cut this down just a little bit because it was a little long, I felt like, so I think I cut like a quarter inch off. So now it is time to work on the undersleeve for the evening bodice, or the evening look, I suppose, since we are really only working with one bodice. I, I think I'm wanting a puff sleeve, and I found in my stash the thing labeled puff sleeve. I have no idea where this pattern came from, or what the original pattern looked like, or how it makes up. But um, it says puff sleeve, so we're going to try it. I have some white silk taffeta here. So there's cut out. This is big this is big enough of a piece to actually cut something out of, so I'm gonna leave it with the regular fabric. This is tiny scrap, but I don't ever throw my silk scraps away. I have a big bin of silk and wool and velvet scraps, and I am saving them for a crazy quilt that will be an eventual project that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And so ever since I started reenacting, I have been saving all my little nice fabric scraps to make one and then of course it's not my my period which is 1830 to like 1875 doesn't actually do crazy quilt quilts so it's nothing i'd use reenacting but i've always liked the concept and so so anything that's small like this that you really can't cut anything else out of except for maybe bias i kind of keep in there and eventually that will happen i suppose so first step 
the first step is actually to cut this part. So now the next step is to sew these edges together, which I will probably flat sell them, because that's the easiest way, I think, to hem things. But uh, we're going to go ahead and cut the little band that's going to make this poofy. And so I think I need it, so I think I want the band less than an inch. So let's cut it at two inches wide exactly, just about right here. And I need it 15 and a half inches long, and I need two of them, of course, one for each sleeve. So I have the bands and the sleeves. I went ahead and hemmed basically the very tops of them since they're just going to be removable under sleeves. I didn't feel like leaving them raw was going to be in my best interest because the silk is rather ravelly even um, on the bias, although I didn't cut it on the true bias, which is probably why it's a little bit ravelly. That would be my bad. Real quick, the battery died, but I really want to get some sewing done, so we're fin finished explaining this and now let the battery charge while I sew. So what I'm going to do is run a very quick running stitch along the bottom edge of the sleeves, and then hopefully the battery will charge enough for us to actually stitch this on together. So I did go ahead and stitch this together. So we go ahead and attach it. All right, so I have this pinned on, so I'm just going to pull the gathering thread when I find it. There we go. Yeah, it's not terribly gathered. It probably could have used to be a bit fuller, but it'll be okay. All right, that's going to get stitched up by machine, and then I'll just fold this over twice and whip it in by hand, and these will be done. Last step. So let's go ahead and put the ribbon in the tucker. And I just have my bodkin here. Okay. It's a little bit short, but I think once I kind of stack it up, it'll be enough to tie a bow. There's our little tucker. I'm going to go right ahead and fold it up. I think I shall keep this in the pocket of the skirt along with the undersleeves that we made. Um, the ones for evening anyway. And that way whenever I need them they're already with the dress and I don't accidentally put them on another gown thinking they're free and they're really not. We have one thing to do. We need to make some rosettes or something to close these bretelles. So I'm going to put one rosette in the back and one in the front. I've seen a fashion plate from 1856, I think it was, that had bretelles closing with what appeared to me to be a rosette, so we're going to go with it. Which kind of surprised me, because rosettes don't really become popular for belts until like 1864, but um, you do see them for trimming b before that, so you do see them on dresses and that sort of thing, so I'm guessing this is just a trimming not considered you know, it wasn't, you know, a belt, even though it was, like, at the waist. So, I didn't have buttons, there's cat, I didn't have buttons quite long enough, or big enough, and so I took some pasteboard and covered it with batting, and then I'm taking some black silk, and we're just going to cover these up to make little button-ish things. I really was going to use this ribbon to cover it, but then I realized that my buttons were an inch and a half, and... So was the ribbon, and so it didn't quite work for recovering. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I would maybe like it a little fuller, but I'm going to just let that go. I would like to get this done. It's been in my projects on my table far too long. I would like to move on to another project. Okay, there is rosette number one. And there are two. I think this one looks better. We're going to put it on front. And I'm just going to attach it right there. Alright, now we are officially done. And now we can put the gown on to see how it fits. So here's the evening gown. Um, it, it's a bit low. Um, I keep, keep looking at everything. I'm like, this is really low. But I don't have my tucker on. Uh, I didn't feel like it was worth putting on just to take it back off for this, for 
for this short little shoot. So I'm missing about an inch of fabric that would go up here. So it's fine. It's just kind of freaking me out because I know it's not supposed to be this low. And also my chemise is riding up. But that's also because I don't have someone to tongue tuck it for me. I love the fringe. I love how dingly it is. I think it's adorable. So yeah, we already put on the sleeves, the, the long sleeves. And I can wear a gown like this. This is, would be, in my opinion, like a decent dinner dress, especially if I put um, a fish shoe over this. <laughs> um, but the long sleeves are appropriate. And there's our little undersleeves with the white work. Let me put on the Bertels real quick because I did not put those on yet. I have to remember which side is which. I suppose it doesn't really matter, but... <laughs> Here we go. That's kind of what the Bertels look like, which I think turned out really cute. Um, it is kind of being weird back here, but I can't really reach back there to fix them, so this is going to be fine. Yeah, this is really fun. I don't really do a whole lot of like total 50 stuff, and so I really enjoy when I get to do things like the pagoda sleeves, and the open under sleeves, and the oodles, and oodles of fringe. Like, there's just such an 1850s thing, and I love doing it. Um, need to get some more 1850s events out there <laughs> to be able to wear this sort of thing, but you know, Leando is 1853 up through, we do uh, about through the Civil War, so perfectly appropriate dress to wear to that. But yeah, not really the evening gown though, unfortunately, but you know. So I did make a headdress to go with this, and I will put the video up um, probably next week. And so I based it off an original painting, and she has this really pretty, you know, velvet, or at least black band, and it had these little pink, pink pink flowers on it, and I thought the pink would look really good with um, the silk, since the silk is shot with pink. So, yeah, it works out. So, yes, I think this is a really, really cute. Um, I just can't get over how dangly the fringe is. Like, I just love it. It would look a whole lot better with the tucker, but it's okay. It's okay. It's right in here in my pocket, actually. Handkerchief. <laughs> and then I put the sleeves in here, which is what I'm feeling now, under sleeves. And at the very bottom of this thing should be our tucker with the ribbon in it. I just, I don't know if I should put it, it seems weird to have the tucker if I'm wearing the pelerine, but maybe I should just keep it on and then just have it, but then I'd have to like adjust it and then put the pelerine on. Which I guess if I was really doing an 1850s event and I was going to wear the pelerine for day and then change into evening, I'd already have the tucker in there. That's something to think about. I might end up putting it in because this feels really weird. <laughs> I feel kind of naked without the tucker and it's really weird because it's just this little inch bit of fabric and you wouldn't think it'd make that much of a difference in the look of things, but to me it just looks wrong without it. So. Yeah, something, you know, food for that. I think this would just in and of itself would look cute with a fish shoe um, for dinner and even with the long sleeves. So, yeah, a very versatile gown. Um, one thing I really like about the 1850s is um, without having to make a separate bodice, how many looks you can get um, with one dress just by taking off, just by adding, you know, a different set of sleeves and putting on a pelerine. So let's go ahead and put on the pelerine. I'm going to take this off before I forget because this is more of an evening um, thing. And I'm going to put it right over everything, including the necklace. We'll just hide it. All right. And there's the day look. Let me go ahead and accessorize this, because I think we need to. Just add a brooch. This is another brooch from Beth Miller Hall. I think we've seen this one before. I definitely got my favorite. But I wear it all the time, and I think there's ones y'all had already seen. And there's the day look, which is totally adorable. I, I just can't get over this fringe, y'all. It's just so fun and dangly. Like, look at it. It's so pretty. <laughs> and, yeah, and of course the back all the way around. I guess I didn't show you the back of the evening portion, but my chemise is sticking up back there, so y'all just going to see basically this. 
without this part and a bunch of white sticking back there. So we'll just work without it. If I were to go out in this, I probably I would need a bonnet, um, a shawl, and a parasol. So let me go ahead and grab some 1850s things so we can kind of see what how I would probably accessorize this gown. This dress I'd probably wear in like 1856, like right after the book came out, um, to 1857. And I have a bonnet that is 1857. This one's a little earlier. The timely tresses. Bonnet and Danielle made the frame and then I trimmed it, if I remember correctly. I'm not a huge fan of the 50s because I don't like the flowers right at the sides. I feel like I can't hear and all I hear is like rustling of flowers. Which is why my other 1850s bonnet doesn't have any trim at all. It's just a little white frill. Shawl. Um, this is one I made and the video will be coming. I think I made these back in June. I'm still working on one. It's so um, not quite there yet. And of, course, and of course we can't forget a parasol. So this one I thought would look really good. Because it's pink, and of course with the pink everything with all this, so this one I recovered, it's missing its finial entirely, but um, it is a marquee, so yes, I think this is very appropriately 1850s, fringe everywhere, fringe shawl, fringe dress, fringe parasol, um, yes, it's very 50s, I suppose if you just want to be totally girly and frilly and the 50s does that. Um, very feminine lines and colors and trims. So yeah, I would say this project is done. Um, have a whole new dress to add to my wardrobe and um, a quite versatile dress at that. But thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.